What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Cold War's multiplayer. And in today's episode, we're gonna be covering the brand new SMG. This is the PPSH-41. And starting it off as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, which is 28, 27, 22, meaning this is gonna be a six to seven shot kill to the body. It's also worth noting there are no body multipliers with the PPSH, so you deal that same damage anywhere in the body aside from the head, which we get a 1.4 headshot multiplier. And what this means is up close, we only need to mix one single headshot with body shots to reduce the number of shots to kill, which is awesome. Then at mid range, it takes two headshots and at longer ranges, it will take three headshots mixed in with body shots. Now, when it comes to rate of fire, this is 909 rounds per minute, which is very fast and very forgiving. However, our base time to kill, assuming we don't hit any headshots, up close is 330 milliseconds. This is the slowest time to kill in the SMG category up close. However, it doesn't paint the whole picture because we have to look at ranges in a little bit, and this is quite important when it comes to time to kill. And also, like I said earlier, all it takes is one single headshot mixed in with body shots to reduce the number of shots to kill, which isn't really all that difficult, especially in an up close situation. And if we do mix that single headshot in with body shots, our time to kill potential is now 264 milliseconds, which is very, very fast in this game. So at first glance, if we just look at our base time to kill, it might look really bad for the PPSH. But when we start considering other factors, this gun definitely still has its strengths, and I wouldn't completely write it off just due to its slower base time to kill. Now, moving on to bullet velocity, we don't have a very good bullet velocity. This is tied for the slowest in the game at 200 meters per second, which isn't much of an issue at really close ranges, but if you're trying to stretch it a bit, this will cause some problems. Speaking of ranges, as you can see here, our maximum damage range is only 15 meters. However, the next damage range is still gonna be a six shot kill in core game modes. So our actual six shot kill potential is 25 meters, which is pretty solid for an SMG. And this is where we also circle back to that time to kill potential. Yes, at really close ranges, you are gonna be dominated by all of the other SMGs unless you're landing that headshot mixed in with body shots. However, when you start getting to like 15 to 25 meters, this 330 millisecond time to kill is very competitive with the other SMGs. In fact, it's actually better than most of the other SMGs. But then when we have a look at hardcore game modes, we only get a base one shot kill potential of 15 meters. However, if we use the task force barrel, this boosts our second damage range up to 28 and we have 28 health in hardcore modes while also boosting our range by 50%, and therefore we get a massive increase to our one-shot kill potential for hardcore modes with the Task Force Barrel at 37.5 meters. So if you are using this in hardcore, I definitely recommend that Task Force Barrel. As for hipfire, the PPSH is tied with the Bullfrog as having the worst SMG hipfire in the game. It's more along the lines of Assault Rifle hipfire. But moving on, let's have a look at our idle sway. And as you can see here, it seems like there's not a lot of idle sway, but the truth is it just moves really slowly. The gun will sway a decent amount, but the movement is so slow that this generally isn't gonna be a problem for you. Then taking a look at recoil, we do have pretty high recoil with the PPSH compared to a lot of the other SMGs. Not only is there a lot of visual recoil, there's a decent amount of actual recoil too. You can see it's kind of got an S shape to it, so there's a lot of horizontal recoil and also fairly strong vertical recoil at the same time. And therefore, I wouldn't expect to be picking people off at really long ranges, but with the right attachments, you can get this under control so that at least within the ranges you'll be fighting in, it's not completely terrible. Next up, let's have a look at our handling, and our aim down sight time is pretty standard for SMGs in this game at 275 milliseconds. Then our stated sprint out time is 350 milliseconds. However, our actual in-game experience sprint out time is 267 milliseconds. And this is just a little bit slower than average for SMGs, only by one frame, so it's not that big of a deal, but you may want to think about sprint out time a bit when putting together your attachments. But after that, let's have a look at our reload add time, which is 1.57 seconds, and this is a little faster than average for SMGs. It's actually got quite a solid reload time. And you can also see all the magazine attachments and their reload times here. One interesting thing about this is you can use a 71 round drum mag, which is a ton of ammo. But then when we get into movement speeds, everything is just completely standard here. There's nothing out of the ordinary. This has the same movement speed as most of the other SMGs. And that pretty much wraps it up for the base stats of this gun with no attachments. And for strengths, we can see that our six shot kill range is actually quite solid for an SMG. It's also got a very high, which means very forgiving fire rate. If you're missing the odd bullet or two, it's really not that big of a deal with this gun. 
And finally, assuming we're able to hit just one headshot mixed in with body shots, which isn't so bad, we do get a great time to kill potential. Having said this though, on the weaknesses, our base time to kill potential if we aren't landing any headshots isn't very good. It's the worst in the SMG category up close. And this gun also has relatively high recoil and therefore it's not the type of SMG that you can stretch to those longer ranges. Now, moving on, before we get into my recommended attachment combinations, I did want to talk a bit about the Task Force Barrel, which is the only barrel that increases our damage. And I already sort of covered this in hardcore modes. This barrel is great for hardcore since that middle damage turns from 27 up to 28, meaning it's now going to be a one-shot kill within that range. However, when we look at core game modes, it doesn't change the number of shots to kill to the body at all. Still going to be a six to seven shot kill. However, it does change our headshots up a little bit. Up close, it still just takes one headshot mixed in with body shots, just like if you're not using this barrel. However, the difference is, at mid-range, it still only takes one headshot mixed in with body shots, which is great, and at longer ranges, it takes two headshots mixed in with body shots instead of three. So there are some headshot benefits here. However, this also massively increases our recoil, as you can see here. And therefore, in my opinion, the slight improvement to our headshot effectiveness is completely overshadowed by this recoil increase, and therefore I would say it's simply not worth using the Task Force Barrel in core game modes. And with that, it's finally time to move into a couple great attachment combinations that I like using with the PPSH. And this first one is what I consider to be the best all-around PPSH setup, at least for me and my playstyle. And with this, we're using the GRU suppressor to stay off the radar, as well as get a bit of vertical recoil control. Then we got the reinforced heavy barrel, which improves our damage range and our bullet velocity, which is really helpful with this gun. Then after that, we got the Spetsnaz Grip, which helps with our vertical and horizontal recoil control. And when we combine that with the GRU Suppressor, this is the recoil pattern we get. Keeping in mind, I'm firing 55 rounds here instead of 32 with my initial recoil pattern earlier on. And this recoil is much easier to control than the base version of this gun. So it's actually not that bad. You can challenge people at a pretty decent range with this setup. But with this, we're also using the 55 round drum mag, just because it's nice to have a huge magazine capacity so you can deal with several enemies before even having to think about a reload. And then we've also got the regular speed grip, which only gives us a 10% improvement to our aim down sight time. And the reason I went for this one is I wanted to have a nice balance between aim down sight and sprint out time. Normally, I'd go with the elastic wrap, which gives us the best boost to aim down sight time, but that also hurts our sprint out time. And in this case, if we were to do that, the sprint out time would end up holding us back in a lot of situations where we're trying to be aggressive. So in order to keep things balanced, we're just using the standard speed grip. So that right there is my favorite way to run the PPSH currently. In my opinion, this is the most versatile way to run it, where it's just a nice balanced build that you can do a lot with. As for the second build that I'm going to share for you guys, this one's more specialized and more of a novelty build that's just for fun. And with this, we're really designing it around hip fire. So we've got the standard suppressor on this, the five milliwatt laser to get the best hip fire possible, the patrol grip so we can get around the map as quickly as possible, and also this improves our sprint to fire time a little bit, not by a lot. Then we've got the 71 round drum mag just so we get maximum magazine capacity because our aim down sight time doesn't matter with this build since we're going to be hip firing. And then finally the CQB stock which helps with our sprint to fire time. I know this also hurts our hip fire accuracy, but it's worth it in this case because we do want to speed up our sprint out time if we're going to be hip firing a lot. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode on the PPSH. As for my thoughts on this gun in Cold War's multiplayer, I think it's a decent SMG. I don't think this is a great gun that's really standout and like top of the list or anything, but I also don't think it's terrible. I think it's a very usable gun, despite its slow base time to kill if we're just hitting body shots. I've still found a good amount of success with it, and I enjoy using it. Of course, those are just my thoughts. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about the PPSH in Cold War's multiplayer so far? Do you think this is a really good gun, bad gun, somewhere in between? Just let me know those thoughts down below. Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I've covered all of the primary weapons now, aside from the new sniper rifle, which will be the next episode. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.